God says Shammai Israel. That's an invitation to listen to his voice and Lex Divina for me is to be his disciple and to listen to his voice in the beginning of my day. Lexio Divina for me has been a daily encounter with the living word of God, who is Christ himself inviting me into conversation with him. For me, Lexio Divina has been a great way to deepen my personal relationship with Jesus, but also to be able to hear and understand his voice better when reading sacred scripture, but also in my own personal life. What I most look forward when I'm doing Lexio Divina is to meditate on the scripture passage that I just read, because that's when the Lord speaks to me personally. Hi everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seeds of the Word Community, and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us this Tuesday, March 30th, to do Laxia Divina and to pray with sacred scripture. We are in the Tuesday in Holy Week. And the entrance antiphon for this Tuesday is, Do not leave me to the will of my foes, O Lord, for false witnesses rise up against me, and they breathe out violence. For the readings of this Tuesday, we will read Prophet Isaiah. Today is chapter 49, verses 1 to 6. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 71, 71. And the Gospel is from St. John. Today, chapter 13 verses 21 to 33, then we skip for the last two verses, verses 36 to 38. Let's start the reading of the Word of God for this Tuesday. Listen to me, O coastlands, pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, He named me. He made my mouth like a sharp, sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a Polish arrow. In his quiver, he, did, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vain. Yet, surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. The Lord says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the, of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Chapter 49 it starts. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you people from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named, it, he named me. We can see here Jesus saying, Universe, pay attention. Listen to me. I was called before I was born and I received my name in my mother's womb. We see this mystery of Jesus Christ being this servant that will suffer for his people, but it being this anointed one this chosen, chosen one that was chosen by God since the beginning. He made my mouth like a shepherd's sword. In the shadow of his hands, he hid me. We see this promises of God that takes care of his people. And we, we saw that and we see that in Jesus' life. My cause is with the Lord and my, and my reward is with God. So during week, is to grow in us the sense of happiness of God it is with us. We will go through hard things, yes. We will suffer, yes. But God is with us. Our cause is with the Lord. If we had this certainty in our heart, we would suffer less. 
I mean, we would suffer in the same way, but this feeling of being abandoned, this feeling of being alone would be way less in our hearts. Because we knew that even though we went through the darkest valley, the Lord are with, the Lord is with us. Our cause is with the Lord. The Lord who formed us in our mother's womb is with us. And the prophecy of Isaiah, of Isaiah says, It is too light a thing, you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. If it is, I will give you as a light to the nation, that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. Jesus did not die only for the salvation of the Jews, of the sons of Jacob, the survivors of Israel, but for all the nations. That's what we celebrate during Holy Week. This awaited Messiah that was being waited by the Jewish people is the Messiah of the whole world, is the one that will save the whole world. Psalm 71 says, In you, O Lord, I take refuge, let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O God, from the hand of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my hope and trust. O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts and of your deeds of salvation all day long. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me. I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. We need to be like the psalmist saying, My mouth will tell of your righteous acts and of your, and your deeds of salvation all day long. We need to be a people that proclaims God's grace, that proclaims His salvation and love for all of us. And now the Gospel from St. John, chapter 13. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that His hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. During the supper with His disciples, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was recl reclining next to him. Simon Peter, therefore, mounted to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while rec reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one whom I give the piece of bread when I have dipped, dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judah, son of Simon Scariot, after he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had a common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified. And God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to, to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Jesus said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? 
I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to the climax of the whole point of Jesus' crucifixion. We see here Last Supper and the disciples and John's disciples' vision. So we see here that Jesus was having a meal with them before the festival of the Passover, before the Friday. And Jesus knew that his hour had come. Jesus' hour had come in the Passover meal, a Holy Thursday, in that meal that he had with his disciples that we call the Last Supper. His hour had come. That's why the Easter tree doom, it's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Jesus starts dying on the Thursday on this meal that he had. And we see here this conversation that John reclining next to him, Simon Peter asking, who was this one that Jesus said that was going to betray him? And they looking at each other, who, who is it? Who will betray our master and Lord? And they all did, in a sense that they weren't with him at the foot of the cross. They all went their ways. We see here this whole drama with the disciples and the master and Jesus. And we see Judah going to betray Jesus to fulfill what was said by the prophets. And John said it was night. Every time the Gospel of St. John mentions day or night, He's not talking about only physical day and night, but he's talking about the state of spirit. It was night in Judah's heart. It was night in their hearts. It was the time that the prince of the world, Satan, was going. He entered Judah, but he's, he was going to do what he came to earth to do to destroy us, to destroy the sons and daughters of men by winning this battle with Jesus. But we know that he did not win. Jesus died to save all of us. One had to die to give us all life. And that's the mystery that we celebrate here. And it is so beautiful when Jesus says, My little children, I am with you only a little longer. I can imagine how hard it was to, to hear that. What is he going? What is going to happen? The disciples did not quite understand that Jesus needed to die. He said this three times. Jesus told his disciples three times in the gospel. We find it. But they quite did not get it, did not understand and Peter said, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus said, will you? Actually, you won't. Not now. You will do it later, but not now. Now you go through the pain of denying me three times. The pain of seeing your weakness. The pain of seeing that you were nothing. To later... Put your hope, your trust, your strength in God. So in this Holy Week that we are preparing our hearts to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our Lord, let's meditate in this gospel and see in what situations we are like Peter, thinking that we have more strength than what we actually have and that we need to be humbled by our failures to later recognize Christ's strength in us. Amen.